I got a reputation and know what's up. I smoke, drink, fight, you wanna start you gonna get hit. I just feel like I'm a adult. My mom, she got the audacity to start talking. She need to mind her business and sit down, for real. Demir is my god sister. She got my back, I got hers, we got a tight relationship. My cousin, Demiria, she called me up saying, oh, some stuff just went down with these people. I need you to come down and help me out with it. And I was like, all right. I took my mom's credit card to buy a bus ticket to help Demiria fight. It was for my god sister, so I ain't sweating it. We get into everything together, like fighting and everything else. Nadia taught me how to fight. Nobody can tell me what to do. You're not gonna control me. I'm a whole wild child, and you definitely ain't gonna put no leash on me. And if you run up on me and my girl Jamiria, I'm gonna be waiting. Wow. Everyone, please welcome Shannon and Latoya to the show. Thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it. I see tears are coming down your eyes. What happened? That video got you? Here, let me give you this. What, what, just, what caught you in that video that made you emotional? Because I don't understand why they act like this. I mean, I give Jamiria everything. Anything she asks me for, even when she don't deserve everything. Yeah. So I want to know, did you know about this fight with Jamiria? Yes, I did. OK. Jamiria I walked up to this girl and just went to swinging on her. And I'm like, wait, stop, stop. So Shannon, has Nadia been in any other fights? Yes, she fights. She's very defiant, uh -huh. to be quite honest with you. She she puts on a good show that she's very polite and very mannered. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. But when she's out of my sights, completely different child. Mm. She fights. She gets arrested. She's just very wild. You heard her. She said she's a wild child. Yeah. Nobody can tell her anything. What kind of trouble has Nadine got into before? Oh, gosh. So... Not once, but twice, she has stolen her grandmother's car. Mm. Right out of the driveway, 2 o'clock in the morning, she sneaks out, grabs the keys, picks up all her friends along the way. Mind you, she doesn't have a driver's license. Got it. <laughs> so they're going, you know, 100 miles an hour down the highway, riding, you know, maybe about an hour and a half south of where we live yeah. to go to clubs, hang out, party on the beach. And these she's are, 16. These are teenagers. And is she skipping school? She does. She failed last year. She did. Yeah. Okay, so now she's a grade behind. What do you say to Nadia when she's acting out? I want to know. Nadia me. doesn't try me. Nadia knows. I'm from the old school, and she might, that's what I say, she might do that in public yeah. and defy authority. She gets arrested. She talks back to the cops. Oh, wow. But she doesn't talk back to me. Mm. Okay, well, I'm ready to meet the girls. Let's <laughs> Ooh, welcome Nadia yourself. and Jamira to the show. Oh, License to drive, you need a whole car. Why y'all playing right oh now? Oh my gosh, Nadia. Why y'all lying right now? Like, who's lying? Y'all are disrespectful to us. Well, so there's so no bad. reason why y'all gotta lie because there's a whole lot of I'm your mother. I'm your mother. You so will why are you lying? Me. Can I smack I'm... her? Can you what? Can I smack her? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did she say that just made you want to smack her? Because you a brat. Okay. She a what? A brat, and so are you. And you are too. Thank you. What's y'all playing? Jamaria, why do you feel like you have to fight? Because I have to stand up for myself, so I'm gonna have to fight. Mm -hmm. Prove a point. Why do, you, why do you feel like you are, uh, constantly have to stand up for yourself? What's going on? Because people like to try me and think just because I'm little, I'm not gonna stand up for myself. Okay. So Jamaria gotta do what she gotta do for herself. Got it. Nadia, why do you feel like you have to protect Jamaria? Because that's my mini me. That's my god sister. That's my day one. I always got her back. <sighs> And that's your day one, right? Yes. Uh -huh. okay. These are our girls. We love them so much. And that's why we're here, because we don't want them to throw their life away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> why do you laugh when your mother says she doesn't want you to throw your life away? Because it's just funny how she changes up on people. What do you mean she changes mm -mm -mm. up? This, because we on a show, you act different now? Nadia, you know I'm always telling you Wait. that I want your best interest at heart. I, I'm always telling you that I love you, Mom. that you are smart, you are beautiful. I know you, you love beautiful. me. I know I'm beautiful. I take after you. So what, do you, what is it? You said she changes up. What do you think? What do you mean by she changes up? Like she, like she is so perfect. Such a good little little mama. I don't no. claim. Listen, I don't claim. What to did be she do, that. Nadia? I don't know. I don't claim to be that because Nadia 
knows I made my mistakes and I've been honest about them. My mother has helped me with her a lot. Okay. And so that's why she feels like she could walk all over my mother. It's, mm. you know, that's why she steals her car. She treats I have her. Fun. She treats her very badly. So I'm I know you said you raised them, but it sounds like your mother helped a lot with Absolutely. the raising. Absolutely. She did. Absolutely. Did you live with your grandmother at all? I did yeah. for a quick minute. Okay. Her car was nice too. Got it. Okay. What? But the city bus what? is even better. Yes. Uh, you've been making faces the entire time. What's going on in your mind? This one. Because I don't, I just feel like a woman need to mind her business and stay out of none you of this shit. You are her business. Okay, Why are you jumping in? Let her talk. Because, let her talk. But y'all don't let, let us rent. explore enough. So that means we got to sneak out what and run away, and that's what we got to do. Okay, so how about this? You don't got to run. You can walk. <laughs> but when you leave the house, my clothes, Everything that I purchase stays. Come on. Because if you grow, mm. then you can go buy your own clothes, Who said your we own gotta buy it? shoes. Right. Oh, so we gonna get the money from? Who said we, we gotta, gotta buy, buy it? it? Wow. We ain't gotta buy nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 Y'all need you to shut up. You going to jail? Don't tell nobody to shut up. They you going to jail? To it's be quiet. You, you going to jail? I wait for the day. I wait for no, the day, and I'm gonna regret the day that something really happens to y'all because we've been there. Saving y'all, sparing y'all from the police. You let me know. I got one time other people the that oh, but right this time, I'm glad been you're enough. showing up. Can you run? N not really. Oh, oh girl. girl. I can walk. I'm not scared. I can walk. I'm okay, saying. so when they hold no, you in them handcuffs, you, you better not call me. She left you in jail? She did for a quick minute. She, she took her nice little time to come pick me up. You were in jail for what? Stealing my mother's car. Got it. Jamea, so I want to know what, um, yes. what, what are you upset with, with your mom about? Because when we, like, sometimes I be feeling like she want to be taking her husband's side and he be dead wrong. And then when I argue with him, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. To be then, honest, I noticed that too. You take his side more than you take your own daughter's side. Because y'all ain't supposed to be arguing with grown people. When you grown next, people are disrespectful, so no, when grown first people, of all, you are a child. You cannot people, win against an adult. These are parents. That, that is her. No, that is her stepfather. Is this earned. is her mother. But I am your mother. Is earned. No, yes, it is. Not you us, it's Nadia. Respect is due to adults. But when you talk to somebody like that, so do you expect for them to I speak cannot. to you in a nice manner? I don't manner? have the capacity no. to keep doing this. Yeah. I don't. Got it. I really don't. And she don't even act like this. I don't. Mm -hmm. She pushing right. it because she I'm gets so sick nice. with the stepdaddy and be ready to fight him. But she asked her what she did Swing. when she was 10 years Swing. old. Swing. Axel. Swing on him. What, what happened at 10 years old? Um, when she drew her hand at me and asked her what happened. Oh. Mom was yelling at me, and I got tired of her yelling at me. I had just came home from school, and she wanted to argue so bad. I don't even remember what I did, but all I know, the next thing I did was ball my hands up at her, and I got knocked down on the floor. But yup, as you should have. Yup. Um, Demaria, my yep. producer told me that your mom told a secret about you that you didn't want out there. What was that secret? Um, I think it was something about me. Okay, so when I grow up, I want to be a police officer, but that might not work out. So I have plan B. Plan B is probably going to be a scripper, but who knows? So you told people that she Aspiring wanted to be a scripper? Aspiring to be great. Yeah, I don't. Listen. We'll probably make more cash than you do. Hmm. Both of y'all put together. <laughs> Amen. I'm so done. So there has been so much going on here that I've been taking notes on, that I've been witnessing and observing. I want to take a quick moment, and I'm going to have you two young ladies, if you could please go backstage. Don't be lying now. I will tell you something that um, I don't, and this is very rare for me to say this, I don't think that I can solve this issue here. I don't feel that way. Because I'm very honest about on being on my show, of like what my capacity, even with my training and skills, there's way more going on here. But what I can do is share with you what I've been observing. Okay. And what I've observed is there's a lot of mimic behavior. And this is not to call either of you bad moms, because I don't think you are. I do believe that your daughters are mimicking majority of your behavior. I do believe, I'm watching how your daughter talked to you. I literally have just been watching the when you talk, when you move, when you move, when you move as well. Yeah. I do think, because I heard you during the break, I went over there and um, your mics are on and I heard you be like, I'm gonna slap the out of you. And so, and so I'm when sorry. I, like, no, 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 you don't need to apologize. Again, I'm telling you what I'm just observing because that's all I can do for you here. And so what I do know about kids who have had issues, a lot of that is mimic behavior because of rejection, because of other things. But right now, 
every time they say something, you both say, quiet down, you better not, you shut up. Which I understand, you're making sure you uh, assert that I deserve respect. Absolutely. I, I get that, yeah. I'm a parent as well. But there's also something about shutting down your kids where they can't express what they're going through. And if you want me to help your kids, I have to know what they're really going through. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know the truth of any of this situation. I don't know what's going on. All I know is they fought, they mimic their mother's behaviors. There's We're so many things. We're their only role model, though. You have to understand, well, for me, at least, because, like I said, I'm a single mom, and I'm going to keep going on that because yeah. it's really yeah. difficult to do that. I get it. You I know, don't have a lot of time. So I don't know if you know this. So I raised my two boys by myself. I was a single parent in that house. And so similar to you having two boys looking at me and mimicking my behavior, like, when I was younger, like, I was partying. I was wild. I've been very open about you. I was doing drugs. I was having the best time ever. Yeah. But one thing that happened is that when my sons got into any situations, I did not match their energy. I did not show them the same thing they were showing me. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you're not frustrated. I get exhaustion as a parent, but I also it understand that you gotta mo model the proper behavior. She don't wanna stop you. I mean, you know I what, know, I'm gonna stand up. And she smiles the same way though. you smile every time you say something. She does the exact same thing. I'm gonna I'm stand up for her though, because you know, of a course, lot of times- Of course, because the same way Jamir and Nadia stand brings. up for each other. Like, of course you gonna stand up for her. They're mimicking behavior. I get Of course. What I just say to y'all is the one thing that you said is you said, we gotta show these girls tough love right now. And this yeah. is something I believe by as a parent and mm -hmm. just as somebody who works in this profession. I don't believe love should ever be tough. Mm -hmm. I think that when you have little girls that are acting out or children that are acting out, love should be compassionate. Love should be patient. And love should be tolerant of saying, I gotta figure out what's going on. It so what I suggest been. to you Come is on. watch your behavior. It has been over and over for years and years. I love my daughter through thick I and get thin. It. I and get that's it. why I don't have her rested. I promise you. my. I my son got on my her. nerves two nights ago, and I wanted to cuss his ass out, but I don't. So, I'm telling you, I don't say things with back. That, I gotta with that, just, I, gotta now, I do behavior. have that bad. Like, okay. I say, Jamiri, clean up your room. That nice stuff don't work. It does. And it's not just with her. I, I, I didn't tell you to bad. be nice. Like, I'm not some parent that tells you to get rolled over on. Like, there's there's so many times. I don't, I'm, I'm, my son has been on this stage, and he has told everybody how strict I am. But there's a difference no. between being nice and getting rolled over, and also understanding that in a moment, when a child is being resistant, there's usually a deeper issue. But I want to go talk to your daughters really quickly. I do appreciate y'all very much. Again, I don't think y'all are bad moms, but I do think that you have to watch your behavior, because it's being mimicked. I will tell you that much. Seriously. I'm going to go talk to your daughters real quick. I'm good. Um, did y'all hear what I said to y'all moms? I didn't you made know my mama cry. I know. It wasn't uh, my intention to make her cry. I gotta tell you. I'm gonna just tell you the same thing she's already heard, that I don't think y'all are bad girls at all. Um, I see the toughness. I see, I see your strength. I actually think those are positive qualities that you have. And um, I actually don't think either y'all, I think y'all are in a space right now where something else has gone on. I, like I, you heard me just say to your mom, they've been shutting y'all down. I didn't get any clarity on these stories. You fighting for a reason. And I don't think that reason is just because you're bad. It's because there's something else that you need to express, that you need to get through, that you need to heal from. You as well. You as well. Like, y'all are both beautiful young women. And I can also tell the way you articulate yourselves. Y'all are smart. That strength could make y'all CEOs and bosses. But right now, there's something else that is happening, that has happened in your past, and you might not identify it now, that's making y'all feel like y'all got to fight the world and y'all got to be tough. And I'm sorry that you're going through that. What I think my mom don't get is like, I have to respect everyone. No, respect is earned. Adult, child, it's let me, earned. Let me let you know, I a thousand percent agree with you. And I believe the same thing comes when it comes to parents and child relationship. Exactly. What I mimic to my child is what I get back. And so if I want you to respect me, I need to respect you as well. And that doesn't mean that I'm gonna let my child run over me, but I also believe that there's something about listening to them, letting them express themselves. Again. For sure. So I see you. Okay. Have a good day. Well, I'm gonna wish y'all the best of luck. I think y'all gonna be dope. All right. Y'all wanna come see y'all moms? Y'all come back out there. And this time, I'm trying not to mimic their behavior. Anything y'all wanna say to each other before I go? Because I know you're crying. We're out of time, but I'm gonna follow up with y'all and give y'all some resources.
Thank y'all so much for being here. Thank y'all, thank y'all. I got y'all. So I know we're here for something serious. Yes. Um, tell me, when did you start having the problems with Kaylee? Um, it started last year. Um, I currently was looking for a house. So we was in a shelter during this time. Uh -huh. And she just blew off the rip. Um, one of the people that, you know, because we stayed there with other people. Yeah. So as we there, they was they must have touched her soda or a, a ice cream or something. I forgot what it was. Uh -huh. And out the gate, she went in the room. It's only a room. We share a room. So she yeah. went in the room. I don't, um, they always touching my stuff. I'm like, hey, we'll just get dressed. We can go to another store. It's only 8 o'clock. Yeah. You know, don't blow up. We, you well, know, we in the shelter. At. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they always touching my stuff. So I go out, I ask the worker, um, hey, is there something else that y'all got in there for my daughter to drink before I go to the store? Oh, no, well, you know, you can leave to go get something. That's what, that what blew her off. I shouldn't have to get nothing and this and that. So now I'm trying to calm her down. She bucking at me, bucking. I'm like, hold on. So at yeah. this point, yeah. I'm yeah. like, what's, what's going on? And she tried to swing, like actually swing tried to you. swing on me. Oh my God. And the, the people at the, at the shelter, they had to call the police because there's other family members there. Uh huh. And if they feel like I can't control you being your mom, yeah, you can't come. Control him. That makes sense. Yes. Is Kayla your only child? Yes, only one. Wow. Okay, so it's just you two. Yes. Got it. Is her father involved at all? No. Not at all. He been left as the, when I was pregnant. He went to jail when I was five months pregnant. When he, when he got out, she was three. Mm. And he got married to when she was four, so. Yeah, man. No. I'm sorry. I, I try to give her the benefit of the doubt. And now that she see that I haven't whooped her, it's like she, she feel like she can whoop my ass. Mm. She feel like she the, she the, she the parent. Mm. I tell her something. I don't got to do that. It's, it's just that. I tell her to go to school. I'm not going to school. Um, this was just last week. The welfare people called me. Um, I got to do a welfare check on Kaylee. She haven't been to school in a week. Mm. And from your perspective, you thought she was going to school. Hey, Every mom, day. I'm going to school in the morning. Then she'll put her phone on D&D. Okay, at 4.15, she'll turn it back on as if she was in school. Mm. She able to talk. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. My gosh, she's going through a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. Is it hard to discipline Kaylee? Yes. Yeah, it is. Very hard. Has it always been that way? No. She was, she was a, a, a great kid. I don't know where my daughter at. That's not my daughter. Yeah. It's yeah. not. How long ago did it start? It started, um, I'll say last year. Last year. So it's been about because a year. Because after the, after, the, um, after the shelter, we moved to Mississippi. Uh -huh. And it got worse. Got it. Got we it. was in a whole other state. You know, it's down south. It's very different down there. So she got to the point where she really wasn't listening to me. Got it. Wasn't, she don't think she can do stuff. And... Um, I'm not going to Milwaukee. I asked her to get, I, I say, well, I'm um, okay. Well, since you want to like boys and, and do all that, get on birth control. I'm not doing that. The, the doctor said, I don't have to. You heard what they said. Um, if your daughter don't want to get it, then she don't have to. Oh, you have to. I mean, I'm not going to be no oh, young grandmama. Yeah. Oh, you can go. Is she disrespectful to other people? Oh, yeah, very. 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 Yeah. You can go. Yeah. My producer told me that you called the detention centers oh, yeah. this week to put her away there. Tell me about that. She was so disrespectful. I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. She was too disrespectful. So I called them. They ain't had no room that day. They was gonna call. They was gonna call me back. So the day that I talked to your producers, just so happened they called me. I had just told them, like, hey, they they called me. It's a spot for her. I think that's where she gonna go. If we leave this show today and and can't nothing change, that's where you are gonna have to go. A free bed. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. I ain't gotta worry about nothing. But at least and we okay. You go somewhere. I pick and choose when I want to come see you. Mm. But you ain't finna pick and choose when you want to leave my house, when you want to listen to me, when you want to play mama role or, or, or be a teenager. You're not finna pick which one. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what you finna do. You're gonna do exactly what I say when I say it. Got it. I understand. All right, so everyone, let's hear what Kaylee has to say about everything. Please welcome Kaylee to the show. How do you feel about what was just said? Now I kind of understand, but it's like, it's just a lot from both sides and some of it wasn't told correctly. Okay. So what, what part wasn't told? What was not told? Your mom was asking. Um, so... Talk louder. What part was a lie? The shelter part. So in the shelter, you did not disrespect her? So you, you didn't, didn't do that I didn't come at the shelter. I did, but it wasn't as she told it. It was like most so both sides. She didn't go ask the worker that they have something else to drink. She was sitting there talking about oh the situation. Mm -hmm. And I was on the phone being silent over there mad. And she kept going and kept going. She kept pushing the situation. So I finally said something back. And we just started arguing. And I was like, shut up, shut up. Put on my mm -hmm. And I went outside. Got it. And then that's when the police got called because when I went back inside, sat in the living room, 
I had swung on her because she kept talking about the situation. She walked up on me. Okay. So that's the story your mother described, though. What yeah. part of it is different? Um, I just feel like it's different from my perspective. Okay. And I'm ready to hear it. What part? Because I'm trying to, like, make sure I hear your side as well. The talking part, I feel like she say respect goes both ways. It's like... You if you act like a bitch, that's what you're going to be caught. I be calling her bitches sometimes. I be like, what the f you who finna keep saying, hey, Kaylee, just calm down. No, bitch, what the f wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yo, bitch ass think you wrong. That's how the f I talk to her. That's the f truth. So you're saying the only reason that you swung is because she stepped to you first and you felt like you had to protect yeah, yourself? Yeah, and I kept telling her to move. Kept okay. telling her. I reinversed it like two, three times. Okay. And she never moved. I'm like, Haley. I'm like, Haley, come on, let's just go to the store. Let's just go to the store. Put your stuff on. Put your stuff on. Nah, move, move, move. At this point, I'm telling her to come on. She's, now she, now you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. When I'm telling you to do something, you want to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. But when you was just ready to go drink your, your soda that was in that refrigerator, you was ready to go to the store. Now that I'm ready to, okay, if you, this is what you're mad about, let's go buy some more. Mm -hmm. Now you don't want to go to the store because you want to sit here and keep yelling and, and get into it. Mm -hmm. And you waited until that white person walked in, this, in, the, in the living room for when she tried to swing on me. Mm -hmm. She knew if wasn't nobody in there, I would have tore a hole in her ass. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your mother is frustrated with you? I don't know. I don't know if it's because I remind her of herself when she was younger or, or like... Oh! Oh! <laughs> it's true. It's okay. true. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Even though I don't think I act like that. I don't even think I'm disrespectful at all. Oh, I tell her, you very disrespectful. I wonder where I get it from. Yeah. That's all she said. That's her favorite word. Oh, do you say that? That's her yeah. favorite word. I uh -huh. wonder where I get You don't get that from me. Uh-huh. Okay. So you, you, you do you feel like you get your behavior from your mother? I feel like I get she my... She run around with hoes all day. Younger than her. Mm. That's where she get it from, because them hoes ain't got respect for yeah. that mama. I don't mm. act like them at all. And she even know that. She know I'm not a bad child. All she day not. I sit at home in my room watching movies on the phone. Yeah. Every time I come out, I get yelled at. If I stay in my room, I get yelled at. It's like, what do you want? Yeah. Is that true? I'm going to tell you why I do that. You stand in your room. You, you stand in your room all day. You don't come out cook, clean. You, you don't help me do nothing. You won't even prepare the food. I told her to wipe the stove. She wiped half of the stove. This, this decided I'm using, so this decided I'm a wife. Who do that? Is that true? Do you do that? No, I did that one time. Why did you skip Sometime, school this month? Because my hair wasn't dead. Mm. And if I was to go to school, the little boys, there, they'll, like, pick. Like, they'll try to pull off your hood or pull off my scarf. And I'm not going to be the type of person to sit there and just let somebody do that. I already know it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because why... Like, I just wasn't finna do that or go through that. Be nobody laughing stock. How did your mom react when she found out? She was mad. And I was telling her, I was like, well, my hair wasn't dead. She missed I, 10 days up there in Mississippi. I automatically go to jail for 30. You already had 14 days. You go to jail. At, at any point of time this day, they can come pick me up because you ain't been to school because your hair ain't done. You go to jail Who after be 50 mad? days that a child That's has not been saying. at school. Well, it's after 50 days. So you, you want to count these days up? Is she counting the days ask. up for me to go to jail or what? You could if I'm telling you it's 14, well, it's only 55. So you got 20 more days to miss. Have you ever run away from home before? Um, one or two times, but it wasn't home. It was actually from her, not from home. When we went to Milwaukee, one time I had run away from her. Out, out the, car, the car, out the lights. Okay, you telling the truth. Out of the car, because I think we were talking about going back home, and I was like, well, I don't want to go back home. Oh, she wasn't ready to go home. So, I, only got, I don't even got a half a tank of gas. And you telling me when the f you want to go? Mm -hmm. If this only gas talk. I got to get us back there where we live at, well, who finna stay down here? Because you, you want to stay down here. You, what you want to do down here? Got you it. don't got no job. I don't listen to you. Where is where we going to sleep at down here? Yeah. If our shelter all the way 45 minutes away. It's not up to you. You're not grown. Once again, we what had, I say you do. We had everywhere to sleep. She got friends, family. Who want to keep sleeping there? I'm already sleeping else. in the shelter I don't even want to be at. Who want to keep sleeping by, uh, by other people's houses? I don't even want to be at the shelter. My name's so bad with evictions, I can't even find a house with 1,500 behind my name. That's why we moved to Mississippi. Mississippi, I moved, I got right there, I got there, got a house, got her in school. She want to play crazy, get a little boyfriend. Now this is where she really going crazy at. She know we 12 hours away. 
It's just me and her down there. We moved. It's just me and her, nobody else, and whoever else we done met down there. Mm-hmm. You got these people in my business. I got in Diamond Court December 5th. December 5th from Mississippi. I had to pay $3,000 to get out of jail. How long were you in there for? For six days. Six so days. she was there by herself. The police locked me up. They didn't ask if I had somebody to watch her or nothing, so that's how CPS got in it. Yeah. But CPS knew she was old enough to stay at home by herself. So when I finally got out, paid the money, finally got out. So that month, September, we ain't had I ain't pay rent. That's why we had to move from Mississippi, too. I'm two months behind rent, and the rent only 167 But I can't get a break if I got to pay these months two different bills, bonds, but still make sure we eat. You got to go to school. You need shoes and clothes. We got light gas. Man, dog, like, hell no, nah, bro. I don't got no help. Like, what the f- do you want me to do? And you still on my f- ass about a hair, a shoe, a phone. And we, f- and we struggling, bro, and she not making it no better. Yeah. And then you want to play crazy. Yeah, I'd rather give you up and sign my f- rights over if this how the f- you want to treat me. How does it make you feel when your mother says that? Like, she wants to call attention to Um, at first, I was like, Getting sad and emotional about it, but she, as she no f- in my it, mama no way. You don't care. treat me like mama. Tell them the truth. Tell them. Because I'm going to tell them. That wasn't what I said. What else you want me to do? If I know if I'm going to come out my room, you're going to yell at me. Mm-hmm. So why would I? Got it. We don't have family time or nothing. We don't talk. We don't watch movies, TVs. We don't even. We'd probably text each other and we'd be in the next room. What just and made we, you start crying right there? Huh? What just made you start crying right there? Because, like, now that I'm finally on this show, it's like I really get to realize how she acts. And it's like she's not even giving me a scenario of why. I don't know. What do you want your mother to understand? Um, I want her to understand that, like, I, I will be there to help. I will help every time you ask, but it's like you can't just go off yelling. Do you regret having a daughter? You, I, I, uh, mm. If she was a boy, she'd probably be better. Because he'd be, he'd be able to be freely. You know, he, he a boy, he can go outside and you can run away. I ain't got to really watch you and put, you know, you can, you can do stuff that, what she trying to do? But that's I can't the just thing. Let, when I she just say run away, she know exactly the where I go. The streets eat you she up and chew you out. And everything. So let me tell y'all something, because... I'm going to be very real. This entire time that I've been on the stage, I've been fighting back tears. And it's because as I'm watching you two, I understand both of your perspectives so clearly. I understand what you feel as a young girl. Um, I've seen some wild, wild teenagers. You're not it. it. Do you have a mouth on you? Yes. And you know it. Do you make decisions of like not going to school that can put things in jeopardy? Yes. You know it. But I also understand you as a parent. And I understand when you are drowning and the one person you like, don't you realize I'm doing this for you? Is you feel like it's making it harder. Yes, I feel like I got to lash out. Yes, I'm going to be upset. Yes, I'm mad that you don't jump up as quick as I can. I'm doing everything I can. Can't you see that I'm moving here and there to make sure we're supported? I get you as well. And that's what's been making me so emotional because I understand both of your perspectives. And... I also see the love here, even through the way y'all talk to each other. I'm sure you're probably thinking, like, my mama really don't love me, though. I'm sure you feel that way sometimes. Like, does she really care about me? Yeah. And I also know for you, as a parent, you like, all these things I'm doing is to show you that I love you. But you're also exhausted. Mm-hmm. I'm your daughter, tired. Yeah. Your daughter just said she doesn't know if, she sometimes doesn't know if you really love her. Take everything else out of the equation. Do you love your daughter? You know, I love you. I've been loving you. This is what I want to do. I want to help you not to drown. So you said you need money for, for uh, a deposit for a house. I got you. I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you cash. I'm going to give you money. I'm not joking. You said you need money for, to get your credit and stuff together. I'm going to pay for it. 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 Do you accept it? Yeah. Good. It's yours. I promise your daughter and you can have a good relationship. Do you want a good relationship with your mom? Tell her. 
I want a good relationship with you. I want to be back how we was. Yeah, me too. You do. Give your daughter a hug. Give your daughter a hug. Growing up, who did you believe was your father? As a baby, you don't really think of that, but everyone else was under the impression that Lonnie was the father since he was married to my mom. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, when I was seven, they, my mother was not present, but they sat me down at the kitchen table and they began to tell me that they don't know who my dad is. And it was really hard to hear at such a young age. Thank you. Um, and then they said they didn't know who it was. So I'm, for the next three years, going around questioning who is my dad? Why doesn't he want to be here? Yeah. <laughs> and, um... With knowing that knowledge, what was your childhood like? Was it hard for you? It was really hard growing up because I really didn't have either parent. I'm living three states away. I don't know who my dad is, and my mom isn't allowed to... I'm not allowed to stay with her. And when were you taken away from your mother, and why? I wasn't older than a year when I was taken away. Wow. And... I don't honestly know the hardcore truth. When I try to talk to my mother about it, it gets shut down. But everyone else has told me that she left me with a friend and my sister with a friend for three days, mm. did not come back. And that friend called CPS like, these aren't my kids, I don't know what to do. My producer told me that you did have some supervised visits with your mother, but yes, those didn't we, really mean a we lot We weren't to allowed to stay with her at her own home. So she would have to come over to the houses that we were staying at. So I didn't have the relationship with my mother that a little girl needed. Yeah. And that was really hard because not only do I not know who my dad is, so I don't have that relationship, my mom is right there and I can't have it. Yeah, yeah. Did you still have contact with your mother after she was no longer in your life? I don't speak to my mother anymore. Mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to her since November. Growing up, I went through all this hardship, so as I got older, I started having more self-love and worth for myself and knowing my worth. So, <laughs> I set boundaries for people. What boundaries did you give your mother? I wrote a whole page of boundaries. I, here it is here, um, I wanted personal space. I needed to be able to be open and be me and be honest about who I am without being judged or ridiculed or without being spoken to with a condescending tone because when I'm just trying to express myself and you tell me that I'm just trying to fight with you, that makes me feel like such a bad person, but at the same time, it makes me feel bad for wanting answers. I'm so impressed by this. This is literally <laughs> my only goal to teach people this. <laughs> you gotta give me a high five. I am thoroughly impressed. Just that first line, giving personal space so I can be me, don't invade my privacy. If you better preach. Growing up, Listen. <laughs> growing up was not only difficult for me because of not knowing who my dad is and all this other drama going on. When I would try to speak to anyone, and especially my mother, about these issues and how they made me feel, because they made me feel like I was a disappointment, like I wasn't wanted, like I did something wrong as a child to make him not want me. Yeah. And that, that's not okay. Yeah. It's not okay to make a child feel like that. Yeah. Did you know Lonnie growing up? I have no memories of Lonnie. I, I don't know him. Yeah, he's a stranger to you. Exactly. Who's on your birth certificate? Lonnie. Lonnie is on your birth certificate. Did your mother tell you who she believed your father is? At the age of around 10, I was really questioning it because I remember distinctly crying in a Walmart parking lot at 2 a.m. in the car, crying, why doesn't my dad want me? Who is he? I need a dad. This isn't okay. I'm watching all my friends go to father-daughter dances and all this stuff, and I can't have that. And that was a terrible feeling because in school, bullying is still a thing, and I was always bullied for being that one little girl that didn't have her dad. Yeah. <laughs> It's just made life so difficult because now I'm 18, still asking the same questions, and I haven't even figured out who I am as a person because I'm trying to figure out who all these people are that are supposed to be here. Yeah, the unfortunate part is you're still trying to clean up a mess that was made by people that should have given you clarity and who should have supported you. And I'm glad that at least now here, you'll get some answers today. Everyone help me welcome Ruth to the show.
I see you're emotional, Ruth. What's going on? I don't know where to start because, I mean, there's just so much going on. And I'm... If you don't know where to start, I can start because I have so many questions that I have wanted the answer to for 18 years. I would, I would love that because the most frustrating thing for me in this situation is knowing that I've told you the truth, no matter how bad it may be. But the thing look. is, I've been told so many things, I don't know what is the truth. I don't know who I can trust at this point. If I get told seven different stories, how do I know who to believe? You're my mom, I should believe you, but I don't live with you, I got taken away from you, so who should I know how to believe? I'm the reason you got taken away, I've never denied that. No one else was around to help. I'm the one that fought for you. I'm the one that did all of that. And I'm the one that has tried to see you and be with you. And I'm the only one that got kept away from you. You're not the only one that got kept away from me. You know how many people I wanted to see growing up and I couldn't see them because of the situation that, that all of you goal. created? Yes, her feelings are valid. Of course they are. Then show that. I have. So Ruth, the reason that it comes across to your daughter is because I'm telling you, you, she feels- You can't, no. You can't not talk to me for two months and then act like I've said anything. Ruth, we're gonna come back to you a little bit later because I need to support your daughter right now. Can I cut that? Thank you. So the reason I'm telling you not to engage right now is because what I saw there was now a clearer picture of what you're experiencing. And I tried to give your mother the tools to understand what she was doing and what she was feeling and to how to understand what you're feeling. You can't acknowledge the hurt and pain the way you need her to for your childhood. And that's the sad part right now. And the reason I told you not to engage is because the answers you need is not from her. What you do need from her is an apology. What you need from her is acknowledgement. She's not in the place to give it to you yet. But what you can get here on this day is support from one of these men who are hopefully your father. So that's why I want to move on. Everyone, please help me welcome Ray to the show so we can get some real answers. Why didn't you see her for 18 years? Her mom and I were really, really young at the time. We got involved in drugs and all the kids were taken. Um, I tried to contact her throughout the years. She was taken away. I had no idea how to find her for a long time. Understandable. I tried everything I could. The only thing I knew about this young lady right here is she was in Alabama. And when was that, that first time you reached out to her? Probably over 10 years ago. Okay. I know that her, I, was, I found her on social media and all her pictures at the time were young. It's actually what started the whole me being sat down at the kitchen table. It's because he messaged me and I was like, who is this random person telling me they're mm. my dad? What is this? And that's how the conversation got it. That's when they thought it was time to tell me and they told me. And when they told me, it did break my heart. And I was wondering, who this dude was. And that's why you started to block him and start to figure out. Cause I was, I was scared. It made me feel scared because why, why after seven years are you trying to message me and get in contact with me? Where were you the other seven years? Cause that's hard to, it's hard to understand as such a young child that mm -hmm. things happen and there could actually be reasons that they can't be there. If I had that option, I would have been. I had no idea where you were. Look, there wasn't a day that went by that I did not think about this girl. She, I've even, there's a couple of songs that I played for her that I listen to one of them every day religiously. That is very, my song to her. Very, yeah. very religious. This girl religiously. is my heart. The name of the song is um, Zoe Jane by Stained. Mm -hmm. and, and he did embarrass me at karaoke by changing Zoe Jane to Anna Grace in front of everybody. <laughs> Look, this is my mini me, y'all. Yeah. I love this girl. This is my daughter, no matter what. Look, we went so far as we've got matching tattoos here. Mm. She, th we got this after we met last year as an adult. Like, and yeah, this basically sure. sums up everything. She is my missing puzzle piece. Mm. I also want to talk to Lonnie, who is the estranged husband or husband of Ruth, your mother, and, well, and hear his side of this entire story. So everyone help me welcome Lonnie to the show. So when was the last time you saw him? What was that, around nine months? When she was nine months old. Got it. So this is your first time seeing her in person? Since she was nine months old. How, how would you feel if you're not the father today? I 
it's going to be like rehashing a nightmare. Yeah. Whenever I went through all that, I went to a very, very dark, deep place. I disconnected from everybody. Yeah. I cut off my family. I cut off my friends. I stayed in the furthest point away from everything that I could. I had to. I'm going to ask you this because even though we don't know the results, I do hear language that says that you could feel as if you're going to regress. Do you have support either way, whether you're the father or not, to help you in this moment? You do. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Um, I want to go backstage and talk to Ray because something that's interesting is you have no ill will to Ray, but he has so much towards you. It is brought on to him through Ruth. Yeah. Because for you, you're like, I don't, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not trying to take anything that's yours. Those were your exact words. Well, that's not my place. Yeah. And this is a much bigger picture than me, than him, than her. This is about this young lady right here. Yeah. Got it. I could have been in the position that he's in right but now. But you understand that the person who put him in that position was Ruth. I, I get that. So, so even though you're mad at him, she was the one that said, oh, you're the dad. Let me come here. And he just tried to do the best he could do. That's fair, and it's easier for me to hate him than it is to be mad at her. Exactly. Just be mad at her. It's exactly. not that big of a deal. I will, Anna. <laughs> Can you come back out? Yes. All right, come on out with me. I think it's time now to get this truth answered. Can I just say something before you open that? Uh, just like I stated earlier, I'm not here to take anything away from nobody. So no matter what you get there, I've done told you where I stand. Good luck, baby. I waited on this for so long, bro. And you deserve it. <laughs> it's here now. There's no more questions anymore. But it's a good first step in your healing. Told Ray you. is my father. I told you. I knew it. I knew it. So now that that's out there, um, can I just say that if Anna does want to pursue any type of relationship with Lonnie, I, that's between her and Lonnie. I would never stand in the way of that. She deserves, she needs. That's good. That's good. That's good. Thank you. She needs all the support that she can get. Oh, no. That's good. That's good. That's good. She... I tried. I tried. No, you succeeded. You didn't try. Thank you. you succeeded. After this, though, I have one more surprise from my daughter. I can say that officially now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. How are you, you feeling? You feeling okay? I feel a little overwhelmed, but also very happy that I finally got my results. But I also feel bad because. We're going to have a relationship, but I feel like I just broke his heart all over again. But that's not your responsibility. That was Ruth. And, and Lonnie, I will say this to you. I'm very sorry that at a young age you got dragged into this. Because the thing is, is that this, that, that choice changed the course of your life in different ways. From you getting angry and having to go back to jail. And I'm sorry. And you deserved better. She said it when you came out. And I just want to acknowledge that no one in here is going to look at you as a bad person. I'm glad that the world is going to be able to see the man you are. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of a vindication that the world actually gets to see, like, this, this wasn't all me. Somebody else played a role in this life, but you made the best of it. And I'm thankful for you. I really am thankful. Uh, I want... I want to personally thank you and your producers. But with that being said, I do have one final surprise for my daughter. Okay. Um, effective immediately, I am relocating to Alabama. When I said earlier that 17 and a half years have been taken away from us, nothing. we're not missing any more days. We're going to figure out who you are together. <laughs> I am leaving for Alabama Saturday night or Sunday morning. <laughs> it's a lot, right? What I'm glad about this is that I know that's abrupt, but what I'm happy about this is that this hopefully today can also start to heal a little bit of the abandonment issues you have. You have yeah, two, men, nowhere. two men that are supporting you, that still love you, 
You have one that's going to try to move closer to be there to support you. So thank you. I also thank you for stepping up. I like and I, I appreciate the woman that you are growing to be. You don't change your path. You do not change, okay? Thank you so much. I feel as though Jalea is a sex addict and if I can't get through to her, I feel as though she's going down the wrong path mm -hmm. to nowhere. Okay, I got it. So for me, I'm not gonna use the term sex addict because I haven't met her yet. Okay. But I heard you say earlier that she's boy crazy. She's boy crazy. So tell me, crazy. why do you think she's boy crazy? I think she's boy crazy because she is literally obsessed with romance. Mm. Every single thing has to have something to do with being in a relationship, something to do with how boys make her feel, even mm. from a very young age. Everything was about, oh, do you think this boy loves me? Everything is literally about affection. What other behaviors have you noticed? Oh my God. I have noticed that when I take Jillia's phone, mm -hmm. every single message in her phone is her talking to different boys mm -hmm. about different ways that they can please her and her please them. Mm. Literally. You told my producers that she had sex in a staircase? Yes, in a school staircase. Tell me about that. The only reason that I know that she did that is because when I went through her phone, I found her having multiple different social media accounts with like different names. And it makes me feel really scared because I feel as though if you can catfish people and talk to these different people, what else could you really do? Mm. I, I'm afraid that if she t is to go out, that she won't come back home. I can hear the trepidation in your voice. Yes. And I can see the passion through how you're you're acting right now because this is your little sister. Yes, and I love her so much. Yeah, and I think that's what we have to remember is that this is your little sister that you see. She's 16. Yes. Yeah. You sent us messages that you found on Jalea's phone. <sighs> Here, I want to go through these messages that you, you gave us. Absolutely. All right. See, if you did stay after school tomorrow, um, we could have sexual situations and I can give you a hickey. These are different boys, by the way. They're yeah. not the same guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go too deep in yeah, these things, but, it's very... but it gives me context of what's really going on. Yeah. Yeah. What was your reaction when you found these? I was scared. Yeah. I was disappointed more than talk anything to her else. About it? I did talk to her about it, and she just lied about everything. Okay. And it's crazy because she looks so innocent. She has a really soft voice. She's a very pretty girl. She's highly intelligent, mm -hmm. and so she really does know how to articulate herself. And I and I, and I feel as though she is very like I just believe that she's sneaky and very deceptive. If you don't know her, you could fall into her spell. Mm. My girlfriend uh, th that's in the audience, she really plays a, ba a major role in this this situation um, with helping me with Jalea as well. And that's some of the okay. things that she's I, also I said. Do. Yeah, Kwani, thank you for being here so much. Um, I really appreciate you being here because I do want to get your perspective. Because I know, from what I read, you encouraged Deanna to take in Jalea. Yes. T tell me why. I just felt like she was going down the wrong path. She didn't have no structure, no guidance, no nothing. She yeah. didn't have no one to look up to, none of that. But do you feel like Jalea is not just struggling with sex? Do you feel like there's other issues? Yeah, absolutely. What are the other issues you feel like? She's struggling with a lot. It's mm -hmm. like a lot going on in her mind. Yeah. And I be trying to get her to let it out, let us in, you know? So yeah. we can help her out. But it's like once we get in and then we try to help her, she, she, go, she go the wrong way. Mm. I'm a teenager. I just turned 16 years old not too long ago. I feel like, why am I getting treated this way when every teenager did the same thing I did? Audience, so you guys were having sex in, on the stairwells at the age of 15? Most definitely wasn't acting like right. that at okay, that age. Okay, so like, no. That's no, that's not a good enough. You, you told my producers that you feel what? like Deanna and um, Kwani don't trust you. Why do you say that? They don't because they, Duh. they are basing it off of my past on what I, your past, my past on when I was little and up to this day because I never got help. Nobody never took me nowhere to go get my mind straight and everybody just left it for me to handle it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that that's not okay. It sounds like you know that you're not acting right, that you're acting out. You're aware. Yes. Okay. So if you're aware that you're not doing the proper thing, can I ask you why? Because I heard you just say there's reasons. So I'm going to ask you why. What are the reasons? There's reasons because of everything that I've been through since little. The split with my parents, to me bouncing around house to house, to seeing with my, what my mother did growing up, to seeing that my father is nowhere to be found, and now growing up to see that my mother is not even taking care of her own child. Oh, hell with Julia. Oh, she, mm. we don't, it's like I felt like I wasn't wanted, like I was not supposed to be there. Mm. And 
when I figured out that my mother was in town all these times, it hurt me and I wanted to go with her I'm because I don't know like her. Yeah. I really don't know her. Yeah. And when I lived with her for that month, I was trying to get to know her, but she was not paying attention. She was always under the influence with drugs and drinking. And any time that she would pay attention to me is when she was under the influence and I hate it. Come here. Come here. I'm sorry. Come here. Come here. It's okay. I know. It's okay. Thank you I don't sure. feel heard. Like yeah. nobody, everybody, everybody looks at my mistakes yeah. instead of looking at the background like, oh, this little girl is hurt. She has been abandoned not once but twice by both parents. They're, her parents are not paying attention. I wanted my mother's attention and her presence. And when I got in front of month, it was hell. And I'm looking, I'm all this promiscuous stuff. That was because of little, because she didn't know how to filter herself around people. She had sex in front of me at the age of six. I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. why I'm like this. And then in the last place that they sent me, I got raped. And that made it so much worse. You know about these things? I didn't know about this. You did not? Yes. OK. And I understand that Kwani and Dion is trying to help out for me, but I just don't need it from them. I want it from my actual parents. Yeah. You want it from your mom? I want it from my mother and my father, but they're nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And the reason why I said I'm keep I'm gonna keep doing this and I'm gonna keep doing that is because I felt like I was put in I was put in an adult situation my whole life. I had to find ways to get food by myself with my mother. I had to I had to beg people. I had to beg people, and she don't even speak to me. Yeah, is this she true? Go, she ghosted me. This is so yeah. true. What do you say to all this when you hear this? I you know I really feel feel really bad because I know that she's really struggling internally. This is not something that I, you know, I am ignoring. The reason why um, th she's not in therapy at the moment is because it took a while for me to transfer her information from North Carolina here. Um, first of all, you know, she's, she was homeless or whatever the case may be, but her mother is the, is actually her legal, you know what I mean? And, but she get, I have legal, I'm like, I have legal guardianship now. My mother missed every single last one of my birthdays yeah. because of drugs and alcohol and chasing boys. And that's why the way that I am, and it's not intentional. I'm still trying to adapt to this situation because I'm, I'm not used to being in a different state with different people, especially with how long my have been sister. Together? Kwani and I, yeah, five huh? years. Okay, no, how long have y'all been living together? She's been living, going on a year now. A year, one yes, year? Yes, one year, okay. literally. Makes sense. Um, first of all, can I tell you, and y'all gonna, I want y'all to give some applause for this young lady. You are a very smart and vulnerable and beautiful young woman. Y'all are doing the best, but as adults, sometimes we get frustrated. We are at our wits end. We don't know what to do. And we don't realize that the language we're using reinforces even more negative behavior coming out. Okay. Yes, she's lying to you all. Yeah. Point blank. We know it. Yes, she, she's manipulating you all when she can. But you do understand that that's not always a negative behavior. It's a point of protection for her. Mm. She's trying to protect herself because that's the only way she's known how to protect herself the entire life. Do y'all get that? I get, I get it. it. How do you feel about it? I, I feel like we're not the ones that's doing that to you. We trying to give her, we trying to give her a better life. Growing up, my mother was strict with me and I'm literally just doing what my mother would have done to me. Yeah. And that's all I'm doing. Yeah, but see, your mom was in the house. She was. So therefore you had a context in your mind right. of that no one's gonna abandon me. No one's True. gonna try to hurt me. No one's gonna try to leave me. Yeah. But when you are strict with her, it just reminds her of every person who said, I'm fed up with you right. and I'm done. I have a question. Yeah, come on. So what was her excuse when she was with her mother? She lived in a house of turmoil always. Like for her to say right now that at six years old, she saw her mother having sex. Yeah, that's crazy. It, it don't matter if you're with your mom. The minute that you, just because you're there, doesn't mean it's not pure dysfunction. And y'all keep saying, you both of you, and I wrote it down, you said, I feel like it's disrespect. She's disrespecting us, it's disrespect. But I need you to remember this. It's not disrespect, it's pain you're seeing. I do my best to encourage her a lot. No, I heard it up here. <laughs> when she started telling her story, I saw a whole different person flip. You <laughs> yeah. started getting to like sensitive mode. Yeah, because I But I'm the thing is it. when you frustrate is the point I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm not talking about when you I'm not talking I about understand. when it clicks in. Okay. I'm talking about when you're when you're frustrated right. at your wits in, that's when I need you to remember what I'm teaching you right okay. now. Okay. This is Woo. a child that's in pain. 
Yeah. Because it's easy when she's doing good to be like, oh, I see your pain, I, I love you, and I see it. But it's hard for us as adults to see her pain when she's done something that aggravates us. Okay. So I understand what you're saying. And I, wanted to, I just want to point out one more thing to you, her language. She kept saying, normal teenagers do this. This is normal teenagers. That's her way of saying, I'm doing this because no one taught me what it is to be a kid, and I'm doing what I think normal teenagers do. Okay. Okay. She thinks she's being a normal teenager. That's why she's frustrated, because she's like, this is what all teens do. She's like, I'm doing good grades. I'm still here. I'm not pregnant. She's taking these things, and she's like, I'm just being a regular kid. We, as adults, we understand what she's doing. Yeah. Right. We understand how damaging this could be. You know, right. she got to understand the role that we play, too. She have those good grades because of us. But this, like, so this is where you now start positive reinforcement. Okay. So when I bring her back out right now, I want y'all to, I need y'all to do something for me. Okay. I need y'all to apologize to her for her language. Okay. okay. Because I don't think there's been an adult in her life who's told her they're sorry. Mm -hmm. You took it in your heart to bring her in. Yes. And you are an amazing human being for that. You as well. Thank you. There's not even blood for you and you over here doing stuff. Thank you. Amazing human being. Thank you. So since you made the choice to take her in, you gotta make the decision to do the things that are gonna help her. So that's why I know y'all are not responsible for all the things she went through, but she, the, it, the healing has to start somewhere, and it can start with you all. I see you getting emotional. What's yes, going on? I don't know. I just, I really care about her. I know, I know you do. Have yes, of course you can. I know you do. I really love my little sister. I know you do. It's so hard to see her go through this, you know? It's easy for us to think that kids who've gone through stuff need tough love, but it's actually the exact opposite. Love should never be tough. So, y'all can commit to apologizing to her yeah. for the language. So I'm gonna bring her back out. Okay. And that's gonna be the first step. Can y'all commit? Yes. All right, cool. Can we bring her back out? Yeah, I really apologize for the language that I use when I talk to you. I just really, you know, love you a lot. I didn't, it, I didn't really think that until just now that I, the language that I was using was possibly influencing you to feel less than or worse. And I apologize, and you know, moving forward, I want to definitely adopt a different vocabulary. Moving forward, I love you so much. I really, really want you to know that. <laughs> I apologize. Too. I really do. I don't want you to know that we'll never give up on you. We'll I'll never give up on we you. We always going to be here for you, no matter what you want to do with your life. We're going to be here. We're going to stand behind you. They got you emotional quickly. What was it about what they said they got you? <laughs> That's all I ever wanted to hear. Now you know that you got people here that love you and they just told you they're not going to give up on you. And so I know that's sometimes hard for you to believe. You're here right now, but you might get home and you might be like, I don't know if I can trust this. But you got you to gotta find the courage in yourself to trust this. She loves you. They, they both love you. They want to be here for you. And they're going to do everything in their power to be here for you your entire life. We all agree. You got a bright future ahead of you. Yeah, you you are a smart young woman. And I'm not going to shame you just because you've made choices to have sex. I'm not going to shame you for that. What I'm going to do is encourage you to say, understand that you can protect yourself. Understand your power. Understand your beauty. And understand that people love you and want to be there for you. And now when it comes to your mother, there's something big I need you to hear. Because I know you want your mom. But your mom has an addiction. Until the addiction and your mom are separate, she's not going to be able to give you what you need. And I'm sorry because you don't deserve that. But I think if you can understand that your mom is still in there. Yeah, take some tissue. Your mom is in there. She loves you. I know it feels like she doesn't because you feel like she abandoned you. She does love you. It's just the addiction has a hold of her. You understand? So I'm saying this to you so you can understand. Yeah, okay, my mom does love me. She doesn't hate me. I'm not hated. But the addiction is clouding her. And one day I pray that the addiction will be gone. And I promise you, she's going to try to show up and give you the love. And hopefully as a young woman, having this language of understanding the difference between your mom and the addiction will maybe help you to say, you know what? Let's try to talk it out. But understand that right now, she's not going to be able to give you what you need. But you have people who can. Do you, can you receive that? Yes, sir. We love you and we believe in you, okay? Thank you. All right, yes, you got sir. your family.
My daughter got pregnant and had a child at 14, and that was pretty embarrassing as a father. I always felt that a girl who had her father in her life wouldn't end up a teen mom. It made me feel like a failure because obviously I'm not doing something right for her to feel like she needs to go out and, and get that type of attention. When she was growing up, my daughter, she was like my best friend. You know, she was like a little me, laugh about the same things, we could talk about the same things. Out of all my children, she, she knew me the best. I don't know if we can ever get that relationship back. My daughter, she started running away when she was 12, 13 years old. It was hard to keep up with her. And my grandmother was her only real female figure for most of her life. Her mother wasn't the most stable, so my grandmother picked up where she kind of fell short. It was like overnight when she turned into a teenager. It was just like a flip of a switch about her behaviors, you know. I always assumed that when they got older, things would get easier. I have a hard time trying to figure out if I should treat her like my child or the mother that she is. I never thought I would have to say that about my daughter. After feeling ashamed because of my daughter's pregnancy, I forgave her and when she gave birth to my granddaughter, I allowed them back into my house. We live in the same house, but we have a very distant relationship. She's her own woman, so to speak, as a mother. But at the same time, she still acts like a child. She made growing up decisions, so now it's time for her to stand on that. She needs to stand on parenthood right now. Everyone, we'll meet Jeffrey shortly, but let's hear his daughter's side of the story first. So everyone, please welcome Jemiah to the show. <laughs> Jemiah, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I want to make sure that everyone at home knows and everyone here, you're 17 years old. Yes. So this takes a lot of bravery and courage for you, first of all, to be here and to trust me to help you have a conversation with your father, so thank you. Thank you. Um, how do you feel about what, hearing what your dad just said in the clip? Honestly, it, it hurts, but it, it hurts really bad, honestly, to hear that my dad's embarrassed of me because I always felt like he was, but I never had the confirmation till now. So did your dad raise you, raise you alone? No, he didn't. My okay. grandma, she raised me ever since I was a baby up till I was 12 when she passed away. Oh, got it. And so when your grandmother passed away at 12, what was the relationship like then with you and your father? I really feel like it switched because around the time my grandma passed away, she was still in the hospital. And I was like, is grandma okay? Like, is she going to come home? And he was like, yeah, she's okay. And I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm looking at stories and somebody, a relative posted my grandma saying, RIP, RIP. It, it's just like, I, got it. I, I got had it. to, I had to find out from social media that my grandma was gone. Yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> it is, I'm trying not to like, it's like that, that's really where my trust for my dad broke. With your mother, was she in your life? She's there, but she's not. It's like, my mom, she goes through her own personal stuff. I feel like she couldn't really be there for me, mm -hmm. like how I needed her. But really, I was a daddy's girl, so I more so wanted to be with my dad anyway. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I really felt like I didn't really ever have, like, stability, like, mm. growing up. Well, so you got pregnant at 14? Yes. And how did your dad react? I didn't, I don't know. I didn't tell him. My, my grandma told him. Got it. And how did your life change when, you're, when you had your daughter? Well, um, she made me a better person. Like, my Aww. dad... <laughs> my dad's saying, like, he makes me stand on business, but I feel like I stand on business by myself. Well, listen, I appreciate you telling me your side of the story, but I also want to hear from your father. Right. So, everyone, please welcome Jemiah's father, Jeffrey, to the show. <laughs> Hey, Jeffrey, thank you for being here. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How do you feel about what your daughter's been saying? Um, I feel like you should be more considerate about me working multiple jobs. If I'm working at a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital overnight and then going to doing case management in that morning and you tell me that you, you texting my phone about groceries when you're really supposed to be in school at that time, that's, to me, that's frustrating. It's like, you could be more considerate about my day, what I'm going through, because I had all the plans in the world to, to buy groceries that day when I got off to buy something for you and my granddaughter. But 
I feel like the kids today, including you, y'all have too much access to your parents. You get to text my phone while I'm at work. I didn't get to do that with my, with my grandparent. Got a question for you. How did you react when you found out she was pregnant? Yeah, I mean, I was hurt. It was there, because there was a pregnancy scare before. Uh -huh. And to get past that, and then to find out that she was pregnant officially, that, that was embarrassing. That hurt. It was like, if you got your, you got a whole active father in your life, and that's how you want it, that's how you, you do, like. You see that, I remember when you told me it's better to have a fully absent father than a half-stepping father. Do yeah. so you and feel like your father's like, half-stepping? Yes, I feel like you, you provide a house for me. You do, and there is food for the most part. But I still need you in other aspects. I don't just need you to. Do you feel like you failed her as a father? Do you feel like that? Um, well, on the time when my grandmother passed, definitely. I wasn't there. I, I was real selfish because that was my grandmother. I didn't know how to tell my daughter that, you know, she was on life support. It was never in my, in my, in my heart or really in my thought process to think that I was going to let my grandmama go. Like, mm -hmm. I could never pull the plug, so to speak. And so things was kind of simmering with, I felt like my daughter's behavior at that time, she was kind of, she was running away still. She was kind of being unruly at that time. And so I didn't know how to give her that information that I had had about how big of a you know, situation it was with my grandma. That makes sense. What does it feel like hearing your father say that? Honestly, I don't get it. Like, I feel like a parent should always be up front with their child, no matter like how it's gonna hurt. Cause I already seen her on life support before she passed away. Like I mm -hmm. was already there. Like we was in the hospital mm -hmm. with her. So if she was gone, like I feel like you shouldn't have just you shouldn't have said she's okay. You should have been like, at least said Jemiah, I'm like I'm sorry, but Grandma passed away. Like you could have sat me down. You as my oldest though, like you as my oldest. Where where does your heart come in for your father? I have a lot of heart for you. A I'm lot. Saying, like, I feel like I'm very. How do you think I'm supposed to process you? that woman? You know how what she meant but to me Dad, too. But Dad, I was 12. How am I supposed to think like that? Why are you shaking your head? Because she's 12, she's, she's my oldest, and she's sitting here, a single mom. You know, there's certain things, there's certain expectations. I tell my daughter, I say, you know, you have to figure out your identity in this family, like. Got it. How do you feel about your father saying that he has to have those expectations? It hurts, cause like, I got expectations for you too. Like, I feel like we both have expectations for each other. And it's like, your expectations for me is so high, like, so high, but I don't even, I feel like I don't even really expect that much from you. Like, I just really be wanting a conversation from you half the time. Mm. Do you feel like you have conversation with her? Yes. You do? Or why do you think she doesn't feel that way? It's probably not as, as it was back in the day. Like, when, when she was little, I mean, that was my buddy, that was my road dog. Like, I remember I was sitting in the car, listening to music, dancing. You know, she has, the, we got a similar sense of humor. I remember her laughing and hearing, you know, little pieces of, of, of my laugh and her laugh, and it was like, you know. Yeah. I'm getting a ping right now. Before the show, Jemiah's mom, Vanessa, wrote her a letter that she wanted me to listen to. Jemiah, I want to apologize for not being the mother you needed and you deserved. If I could do things differently, I would. I would forever be grateful to your father for stepping up and raising you. Not a lot of men would do that, and I know he has done the best he can. I hope you can mend your relationship with him. I don't want you to lose the first man who showed you love, your number one protector. I love you so much, Mama. Have you ever heard your mother apologize before like that? My mom, like, if she feels like she's wrong, like, or if I tell her how I feel, yeah, she'll apologize. But most of the time, like, I'll just keep everything in because, like, I value my parents. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Like, I don't want them to feel like they're not doing anything right. Like, 
I do hold in a lot, so I don't hurt my parents' feelings. Mm -hmm. I do. I noticed you rolled your eyes a little bit when she was saying that. What were your thoughts in your head? I, I, I do care about my daughter. I do, I do want what's best for you, and, and I do expect more from you. I, I want you to be an example. And that type of thing that was printed in my head when you went and had a baby was ruptured. That was hurt. I mean, I'm standing on business like my granddaughter lives with me and my daughter lives with me. I'm hurt, but we're still going through it. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah. I got to hold on. I got to say something for you because this is, this is the, the thing. I know your daughter didn't use protection, but she still needs your protection. She still needs your attention as well. And I hear you when you're saying you're embarrassed. I'm hearing when you say these things. I got to be very honest with you. There's a lot of you that I see in myself. And I also understand that feeling of like, I am so overwhelmed trying to work, trying to do every single thing. I'm busting my ass. I'm trying to save every dollar. And I just get frustrated because I used to have this issue with my sons. I used to come home and one day I realized that I don't give them the same patience that I gave the rest of the world. And I'm not saying that you don't make her a priority because I understand you said you stand on business and I see what you're trying to do. You see what you're doing. You're saying like, I still got my daughter in the house. I right. get where you're coming from. I really do. I'm hearing your 17-year-old daughter tell me that at 12, she started to lose, she lost her great-grandmother who was close to her. Yeah, I know you were grieving, but she doesn't even know how to process that. Imagine if you're at, how old were you at the time? 34, 35? 34. If you're 34, 30, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. if you're in your 30s and you couldn't process it, how was she supposed to process it? She's already had a household where trust has been broken. She doesn't know if her mom's going to be there. And now she feels like she can't even talk to you anymore. Please tell me what you feel about what I just said. Jeremiah, you have to know sincerely that I love you. And my expectations of you is because I know what you're capable of. I definitely am going to send you for some father-daughter parenting classes. Do you feel like a father's love is conditional? Yeah, it shouldn't be, though. Because I think one of the things as parents, what we do is we love to love our kids when they're at their best, but then we don't know how to love them when they're at their worst. Yeah. And that's just the truth. I want you to remember, she's a teenage girl who just had a baby. Hormones already on fleek with, with, with being a girl. That on. Yes, she's going to have to learn how to manage them, but that's the job as a parent. When she's disrespectful, it's not because she just wants to wake up and disrespect you. It's because something else is going on in her mind when she's 17 years old, doesn't know if she's going to be stable, does, just had a mom who had to apologize for not being a mom. There's stuff going on. And I know you want her to be perfect, but she's a human. Can you give your daughter a hug? You were heard, and you were brave, and you were strong, and hopefully you know how impressed we all are with you. <laughs> okay? Thank y'all. Let me tell you, one thing you should never be is embarrassed by this little girl. This woman is, this young woman has a bright future, okay? Yeah. Just please be there to be patient with your daughter and to listen to her and just have a conversation, all right? I wish you the best of luck. I wish both of you the best of luck. Thank you. Everyone, thanks for being with us. Make sure to come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and we can keep going. I love you all. I was shot nine times, and my son was shot twice. My daughters, they all was in the house. It was a home invasion. Everything did change in an instinct on that morning. I'm paralyzed from the waist down, and I'm in a wheelchair. My son, Kwani, was only 11 at the time. He was shot twice in the legs. Um, Mary was eight, my baby was a couple weeks old. The trauma is definitely, definitely still real for us. And now I feel like I'm fighting another battle for my daughter's life. Maylana's 14 and she acts like an adult. She began suspended from school, she be still in front of the store. She disrespected me, calling me all type of names. We was arguing and then she said, stand on it. Oh, I forgot you can't. So that was the hurtfulest thing she ever said to me. Maylana Laura needs to know as long as I'm around, she's not gonna be that baddie that she claims that she wanna be. My kids need to know whether I'm in his wheelchair or not, I'm still their mother. When I first got shot, I was very like, you know, mean, like I didn't even wanna be here. Mm -hmm. So I was a certain kind of way where, you know, that probably could turn somebody away from me, but like I said, I didn't wanna be here, I was going through something. 
So I feel like right now I'm kind of trying to redeem myself with them a little bit. It changed everything from yeah. respect to everything. It changed respect. In what way do you feel like it changed respect? Because they don't respect me from this chair. They don't listen to anything that I say. Mm. Is your daughter, um, has she become negative and argumentative with you? Very. Uh-huh. In what ways? I can't tell her nothing. Mm -hmm. She's not in school. She was kicked out of school. She's still from the stores. But it's all because of other people. Like, because when we live somewhere else, she didn't do it. And she fighting in school, too? She was fighting in school, physical with the teachers as well. I be feeling like school could make you, you know, not like your kids, because they always calling. Mm -hmm. You know? So, and that's what I be trying to tell Mimi, like, it's like things give me a reason to be mad at you. Like, I be, I be just minding my business, and either you do something where the cops got to be knocking at my door or the school is calling me. Yeah. That's the realest thing I've ever heard anybody say, and I've never heard anybody say this, but I just took myself back to when my son was in the ninth grade, and he was having some problems. When you just said school would make you feel like you don't like your kid, that is the... Re I mean, every time my phone rang when I was at work, I was like, you a damn lie. My phone is... <laughs> I was like, you are, my phone is not ringing again. And it was like, my frustration was just, I've never heard anyone put it like that. It's but real. it is the realest thing and I've ever heard. And then it's the stuff that they tell you. Yeah, of course. No, I get it. Yeah, I, I feel you. That's why when you said that, I was like, I understand. And then that when I'm telling her what they're telling me, she'll buck up at me. Like, why are you getting mad at me for them mm -hmm. telling me what you did? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got to ask you, what do you remember about that day in August of 2018? Um... When I woke up, my mom was on the floor. She told me to go outside because she got shot. Mm. So I went outside and I called the cops and they came. Got it. And what do you feel like your mom does not understand about you? That I'm going to do stuff and she's not going to accept it. I guess I'm going to go outside with my friends. And she always want me to go in the house and do chores every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that. What kind of chores does she want you to do? Like the dishes, I'm not gonna do lying. that. Lying, I do my own dishes. You're your lying. Cat. Clean up your lying. cat. And I do. And you don't. Mm hmm. Anyways. You do realize teenagers have chores, right? Mm, okay. That we all, that we all okay, do. Okay. That we but all do. Okay. She was able to get $80 a week. Mm hmm. Right? Right? She got it one time. First of all, she didn't give me the money. I gave you 40 because I said I'm a whole 40. I'm smart. Yeah, okay, well, like, 40 where's my other 40, though? With. Oh. You didn't do it the next week. Mm, whatever. You're, what? Think about it. Be for real, though. Why would I give you the whole 80? I explained everything to you. I still You're going to get money. 40, and then I'm a whole 40. Did you clean up the next week to even get another 40? To even be able to save another 40, did okay, you? Okay, I try. You but never consistent. We can have heart to heart. First of all, we can have all that, all, and it doesn't get to I you. I do do my chores, too. When my brother was in a program doing my chores, you're just ungrateful. That's all. You said. And then you tell me that I don't do chores. Okay, yes, I do. If you did, why well, I gotta tell you to do it then? Make it make sense. And y'all can shut the up too. Oh. Make it make sense. Oh my soul. What's going on? What just made you say that? Because they keep, yeah, like, if you got something to say, say it. Because they are having a reaction to mm -hmm. how you acted? Yup. Okay. Tell me from your opinion, why did you get kicked out of school? Because I was fighting and I got a smart mouth. Mm-hmm. Where do you think you got the smart mouth from? Her. Okay. And why are you fighting at school? Because these <laughs> got me And what do they have you messed up about? They pop like I won't do nothing. Like. But these is people that be friends. <laughs> these is people that be friends, though. These is people that be friends that she'll sneak out the window and do all type of and then y'all fight. Okay. Okay. And I heard you were stealing stuff. You were stealing makeup and hair, hair mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Hair dye? Yep. You told my producers something that they just told me, which is you think your mother uses her wheelchair to make people feel sorry for her? Yep. How the well, can I use this wheelchair to make them feel sorry? Because you do that. I do everything by myself. Okay. You talk you about know. watch your mouth. Like I said, like you said, she start. It's plain. Like nobody was not coming at you crazy. Explain. Like I said, explain. She talked to her friends. Don't waste your breath. Why are you still explain. talking? Though? I'm talking to him. Explain. Like I said, she Tell literally talked explain. to her friends about me, and she, all she says, "I'm in my wheelchair." Yeah, she gonna do this in the wheelchair, in the wheelchair. Yeah, because you, you pop.
Because like, if I was standing up, first of you wouldn't all, be doing none of this. You don't know that. You don't know that. You are a liar. I'm not lying. You're lying. Since we moved to our new house, I was been cleaning, cleaning my house. house. Yes. Yo, I it swear to God, yo, you are a. You I'm said, not lying. You said, you like I'm not even playing right now, yo. You talking about producers that you said? I ain't even playing with you right now. Like I'm not lying. You are. You talking about producers that your mom? Yeah, she maces me. Do you mace her? You do. Yeah. She put her hands on me. Did you hit me with a bottle? You're lying. You're is you are lying. No, maybe you hit me in my head with a bottle. Oh my God, Mei Mei, you ain't hit me in my head with a bottle? I'm not lying. Yo, Mei Mei, you ain't hit me in the head with a bottle? So like I said, she Yo, literally come... Yo, Mei Mei, you ain't hit me in the head with a bottle? I did it! Go get my phone. So Go get her phone. Detect. What happened? People What's in the Go phone? Go get your phone. You really lying Go out get here? your phone. Mei Mei, did you hit Go me in my head with a bottle? I did it. So you, you did not hit me in the head with a bottle? No, I didn't. She literally Yo. come in my room and maces the whole room. Yo. It's literally orange. On the wall, you, you literally threatened to really me too. I'm not like okay, yeah. so I'll make you again. You hit me with a bottle. I did not. And what you talking about? I did not, bro. You ever lie on me? I'm not lying. I'm gonna let you go back. You got me. Okay, okay, you got me. Lying? No, you are lying. Yeah. I'm well, you get so that you can see it. And then. Bye to you too. You mad? Yeah, you're I mad. I'm even talking to you. You're mad. She says that her and your brother are survivors. That's what she constantly says. My producers told me you said. Mm -hmm. She always says they're survivors. Does she call you a survivor? No. She doesn't call you a survivor. Mm -mm. Mm. Got it. Got it. See, like I said to you, I saw, I saw the real you. You're 14 years old. And I know the behavior we all watch, we're seeing you mimic it. We heard how your mom talks to you, so we know why you talk this way. So I don't blame you. And I don't think you're a bad person either. I actually think you're pretty intelligent. I actually think you're pretty responsible. I actually think a lot, I think very highly of you, even with what I saw on this stage. Thank you. I do. I do believe you when you said that you have been taken care of a lot. When it feels like it's my responsibility where I feel like I don't know how to have a time to just be a kid when I feel like I'm always having to do something and it's been years compounded, to your mom it might seem like, oh, you're lazy today, but for you it feels like I've always been doing this. Right? Yes. Yeah, I know. Talk to me about what you're going through. Um, I'm going through a lot. Like, it's just how my mom just don't understand me at all. And I, I'm like, talk to her. I keep trying to talk to her, but like, I just really can't talk to her. What do you want her to know? Like, how I'm feeling when she's, like, calling me out my name and stuff. And how do you feel? Like, she brings me down. Like, she talks about me. Like, she calls me, a, like, a whore. I'm not a whore. I know who I am. I don't know, but, like... Yeah, so it brings you down. And if your mom's calling you out your name every minute, like, yeah, it can bring you down and make you react a certain way. I totally understand. I'm not saying it's right, so hear me out. I'm not saying it's right, but I understand it, and I get it. I don't blame you. Does it feel nice to have somebody who understands you a little yes. bit? Yes. Yeah, I can imagine. I talk to it, but can I ask you this? And this is where we got to take accountability as adults, as parents. Would you talk to another little 14-year-old girl the way you talk to her? I do. You talk to other 14-year-old girls on the street like that? If they, if they saying something to me smart, is that what you mean? Because I'm not just going to come up to a 14-year-old girl and be mean to her. Unless we not going to make it seem like she came out of me and I was talking to her like that. We not, not going to make it seem like that either. I'm not going to make it seem like that. Through over time, this is somebody I got to be around that'll look at me in a wheelchair. Know. Somebody will tell me to stand on that. Oh, I forgot you can't. Oh, that's, a, that's some kid to you? That's still a kid. Oh. Because, you know, kids say nasty things. Oh, they do? And unfortunately, they say nasty things to their parents sometimes, oh. too. Mm. I did I, not know that. I did not know a kid would say that to their mother. Yeah, I've heard worse. Mm, that's crazy. That's a shame. It is a shame. It's a shame. But what I want you to understand is that it doesn't make it right. And I'm sorry she said it to you. Mm -hmm. Because you've been What I'm supposed lot. to say? Oh, baby, don't say that. What I'm supposed to say? I didn't say tell that. Tell me. No, I want you to tell me for real what I'm supposed to say. I really honestly want to know. Like, I really do. I will tell you that matching her energy is not going to help you to figure out what to say or to figure out how to make this relationship better. So I'm just supposed to feel this small as a child? I don't think you should feel this it's small It's saying either. something to me. But it's the communication. 
it's even if I'm telling her to leave me alone, get out my face, none of that works. I still just got to be the bigger person. Unfortunately. Oh, can't do it. Unfortunately. Can't do it. So that's, that's the breakdown. I know that you say that you and Kwan are survivors. We are survivors. Do you feel like she's a survivor? Of course. Do you ever say that? I told her she a superhero. That's enough to say. A, super, she, a superhero. A, I never said she was a survivor because she didn't get shot. I didn't know I had to say that to her. Okay, so hear me out. The problem is that her being 14 is also compounded by the trauma y'all both feel. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that what she went through and what she's experiencing, she didn't understand. She didn't have the words. Just the same way you didn't have the words. And she's still trying to figure it out. What I do know for a fact is your daughter loves you and she wants the bond back with you. And no, she don't. If you can't believe that she wants to bond back with you, then there's not going to be any work that I can do to help y'all. Because you got to believe she wants to bond back. I asked your daughter one thing. If I could help your mother to understand the same grace you deserve, she deserves grace, would you come back out there and model not disrespecting your mom? And she gave me her word. See, this is where I get to see what you see. Either she's going to do it or she won't. All I'm saying is this little girl does not get asked for much but to go to school, clean up, be respectful. I get don't it. Don't get piercings. Don't dye your hair. I understand. And then we got to go through all this. But that's for your everything mother you to just tell you to clean up and you can I look need, at her and but say, but I need you to hear. Stand those, on that. The issue you, you just can't. said is a fort. See, what you just did again, this is why I told you. You went oh, yeah, back to the moment. Oh, never going to forget that. But see, if you can't forget that, then y'all are never going to have a healthy relationship. I know. You know, you know, it's only it's only a couple people that said some about this wheelchair that'll never get the same way again. Are y'all crazy? Okay, hold on, you just said the issue right there. There's a couple people who have said things about me in this wheelchair who would never get the same me again, and unfortunately, one of those people is your daughter. Mm -hmm. So that is something that you have to heal before I can heal the relationship with you and your daughter. And I don't know how to do it, so I don't know. If I get your daughter to apologize, can you receive it? I guess. You guess? All right. So I talked to your mother. And we talked about what we talked about. I shared her with what I said with you. And I understand her feelings as well. I understand how she's feeling. But there's a comment that you made to your mother that still sticks with your mom. And I know when we feel hurt, we say things because we own jab. Do you remember what you said to your mother? Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, you can't walk, something like that. But like, I said it cause like she was coming at me crazy. I'm, hold on. Sorry. I understand, I understand. I heard you and I heard her. She came at you crazy, so you said something that you felt was gonna hurt her back. I know. Can you apologize to your mother for that comment? And I'm really sorry. mean it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would never accept it because you <laughs> said that to me because all I do is tell you to clean <laughs> Are you crazy? Well, first of all, you That's all I tell you to do is clean up and go to school. When you had the audacity to say some dumb ass like that to me. Okay. Oh, so you came to me to help you to fix this, to heal the, break, the, the heartache that y'all got, and I saw the path to it. And I think we all understand the path to y'all healing it. But that path for y'all healing this relationship is going to start with you. And I'm going to tell you that right now. If you want your relationship back with your daughter, it's going to start with you. I'm going to tell you this. As I told you before, I know there's a, a very smart, responsible young woman inside of you. I know it. I've seen it. I understand it. Even you taking the opportunity to model that behavior and try to, like, apologize and do it when I know you felt uncomfortable, I understand. I see who you are. And I think that there's still even more room to, be grow, to grow. I know you don't need to steal. I know that you want a relationship with your mother. I know you do. You're going to have to do some work, too. And you're young right now, but you can start to learn that you can actually make different choices. But also, I you have to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you're not ready to. 
is you got to forgive these moments. Why would I say I forgive her when I think she's going to do it again? How like about I, I know she's going to do it again? Well, that's, that's the cycle there. Until you can forgive and believe that forgiveness, you're never going to see your daughter the way that you're supposed to see your daughter. And that's the truth. The sad part is this little girl actually just wants her mother back. See, all this playfulness, the looking at her, it's like, it's like she's like looking to be a kid with her mom and her mom wants her to be an adult. Mom should have said sorry, but mom needed to heal first. She doesn't feel like anybody respects her anymore because mom's behavior was built on her strength. That was what her personality was built on. I'm strong and yeah, I survived this, but now I feel like nobody respects me. And the person I need to respect me the most is my daughter and she doesn't respect me. But the daughter's just like, I don't even know if I respect myself. I don't know what's going on in the world. So that's sad. All right, we're gonna figure it out together. All right, thanks for y'all for being around for that. I got a reputation and know what's up. I smoke, drink, fight, you wanna talk, you gonna get hit. I just feel like I'm a adult. My mom, she got the audacity to start talking. She didn't mind her business and sit down, for real. She thinks she can run my life and be in my business and tell me what to do and try to stop me from talking to who I want to talk to, try to stop me from drinking and smoking. She's wrong. Everybody pissing me off. Everybody just need to back up. Even your cameraman pissing me off, Karamo. Everyone, let's meet Heaven's mother, Latrice. Latrice, welcome to the show. Um, so, that's, I, I hadn't seen that before. Is this how? Heaven is always acting? Yes, Constantly. that's how she behaves, yes. She does the most. If it's not her way, she's going off, wanting to fight, smoking, drinking, attitude, just doing just too much. So when did Heaven start acting like this? About 11 or 12. And how do you find out about these fights? Um, well, the kids around the neighborhood, between them and my son, they come showing me uh, videos of her fighting, you know. You sent my producers a video that you had of her fighting in the school. Can we show that right now? I can only imagine what you feel like as her mother seeing that. Are you scared for your daughter's safety? I am. Yeah. Like, you, you know, like, you I'm go. questioning my parenting, like, I can't keep going back and forth with you because of your attitude. It's like, either you're gonna listen and you're gonna do right, or they got a place for you. Yeah. Juvenile. Yeah. Well, she kicked out of school. Yes, she was. Why do you think she acts out like this? Um, attention. Attention. Okay. Attention from her friends. I think it's time that we meet Heaven and get her point of view on all this. So everyone, please welcome Heaven to the show. How are you doing? Nice Let me give you a hug. You. Nice to meet you. Take a seat for me. You look very nice. Thank you. How old are you? I'm 13. 13 years old. Okay. So I got to ask you point blank. Why are you fighting? Because they want to talk and, you know, they want to talk about me and they want to talk about my friends or they want to talk about my family. And that's very offensive and I feel some type of way and I'm going to say something or I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. How many fights have you been in? Over 15. <laughs> Over 15? Why are you smiling with that? I feel like I'm grown. Like, I get, to, I can act how you I want to act. You are not grown. Yes, I, I need am. you to stop saying that. I'm grown. You are not grown. Yes, you are 13. I am grown. Woo! I just know. What are you talking about? I want to know from you, how does it feel that knowing that when you fight, you're hurting someone? I don't care. So what? Have you ever thought about maybe if you got into a fight with the wrong person, they could have a weapon and end your life? No. When I did care, Nobody wanted to care, so therefore mm. now I don't care. Got it. Why do you think no one cared when you cared? Because I just feel like I was very, I was very vulnerable, so it was easy to like step over me or you know mm. walk, like walk all over me, you know. But I can understand the friends outside. Right. If you feel that's your, if that's what you think is like, okay, y'all treated me bad, but your mother and your family is here for you. They love you. So why are you disrespectful at home? Because I just feel like I can take it out on anybody. No, mm. you can't. That's not okay. And you know that. That's not how I raised you. You know right from wrong. You a kid at the end of the day. That's what it is. That's what everybody's sitting there looking at. They're trying to figure out what is you doing being 13 years old wanting to do what you want to do when you cannot do that. I told you. I tell you time and time again, do I not? Why do you want to put yourself in that situation when you already know what it is because I told you what I've been through when I was your age? I'm really trying to understand 
what has been going on in your life? Because it sounds like you were not fighting and not doing stuff and then all of a sudden things switched. So there is actually something. Okay. I get like looks from other races and stuff. Okay. Like differently. Like what do you mean? And girls like will make fun of me and stuff and they will call me the and say like I looked ugly and like and I did not feel comfortable in my own skin. So you were getting called the and being told you were ugly. Right. Prior to that, in third grade, I got bullied my whole school year. Mm. And them girls was telling me to die. They was telling me to kill myself. And I didn't even know stuff about that yet. I'm looking up online how to kill myself because I'm ready to go. Mom, what do you want to say about all this? I didn't know that you was going through this. And that's the reason why it caused you to start acting out. I'm sorry that you had to experience that, mama. And I know why you didn't tell me, but I wish that you would have. <laughs> Cause you should never have to experience nothing like that. But now that I know, I got you. It's hard. It is so hard. Waking up in the morning, looking in the mirror, and being disappointed. I feel like I just don't meet up to certain people's expectations, and I wish, I really wish I could. I just refuse to be looked at as different anymore because people say different is good. I don't think different is good. And I, I was promise just, you right now, you can ask everybody that's sitting here looking at you. I promise you, they will tell you that you are beautiful. You may not clap because you ugly. That's hard. That is hard. That is hard. That is hard. That's hard. When I look at you and I saw this, I knew that you weren't fighting for just fighting sakes. You're just fighting to protect yourself. Now you're telling me that at some point people were telling you that you were ugly, calling you a, a, a derogatory racial term, you're telling you that you're not enough. All of that starts to come together and then all of a sudden you hit 13, puberty hits and you upset. And you want to protect yourself and be grown because you feel like grown people know how to protect themselves. Grown people can do what they want. Grown people don't have to deal with this. And they can do it on their own. I feel like, like I'm very like stubborn. Like I could do it on my own. Yeah. And like, if anybody gets in my way, it is a problem. Yeah, this is more right now than you're gonna be able to handle your own. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you therapy. Would you be willing to go? With your mom? Okay. I'm gonna give you that. Because I think this is, having this and having someone be able to talk to y'all and give y'all the tools to say, all right, now that we know this, this is what we do is gonna be the first step. It's time to take those bricks down one by one and remove that wall and remind yourself as a 13 year old woman, you have somebody here who's gonna model for you the strength, the beauty. And you say you don't connect with your mom anymore. And I hear you, I understand what it's like to be young, I understand what it's like to be in school, wanna look good, wanna look fresh. I had kids myself, you know, I like to look good. So I'm gonna also send y'all a little mother-daughter shopping day. On me. <laughs> so you can go shopping. You wanna go shopping? Please? You wanna go shopping? I uh, know it's not going to fix the problem. That's not what we're trying to do there. But it's nice to have something that you can feel good as you're doing that. Give me a hug, girl. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I really do love you both. Come here. Give me some love. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come here, you sweet baby. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to be all right. Y'all going to be all right.